Baseball is America's pastime. Since the 1840s, the sport has exploded in popularity and is played by people of all ages across the entire globe. Baseball represents the arrival of spring and the anticipation of summer days in the sun. Throughout history, baseball has given Americans hope in both good times and bad. Unless, of course, you're a Mets fan, in which case maybe don't get too excited. Today, between the internet and television, there's plenty of ways for baseball fans to follow their favorite team. But before the invention of modern media, people had to look a lot more locally to get their fix. Between the 1920s and the 1970s, Wilton had their own hometown nine to cheer for. I'm Nick Foster, Associate Curator here at the Wilton Historical Society. On this episode of History is Here, we're going to examine the Wilton Farmers, a semi-pro baseball team that called Wilton home for almost 50 years. The team, before World War II, was one of the hottest tickets in town, and frequently had roughly half of the town's 2,000 residents turn out to watch them face teams from as far away as Poughkeepsie, New York. The Farmers began in the same way that Field of Dreams began, except with a lot less disembodied voices and ghosts of long dead ball players, and a lot more cows. In 1920, Charlie Warren moved to Wilton, bought 26 acres of land, and started a dairy farm at 213 Danbury Road. Seeking to drive more business to the property, Warren, along with his business partners Johnny Knapp and Charlie Myers, decided to build a baseball diamond in one of Warren's dairy pastures. He called it Orham's Field. They brought in Frank Squire Riley, a Norwalk native and former star semi-pro player, to create a team. Riley recruited some of the best talent in Wilton and the surrounding towns. As a semi-pro team, the farmers offered a limited salary to the players, but Riley convinced some of them to join in return for a percentage of admission money from every game. Riley's recruitment tactics paid off, and the farmers found success in the field right away. Playing against other semi-pro teams, the farmers of the 1920s were an unstoppable force. In 1924, the team won 20 games and only lost five, and capped off the season by winning the Norwalk City Championship. In 1926, Columbia George Smith was added to the roster. Smith was a former Major League pitcher who threw over a thousand innings between 1916 and 1923 for the Giants, Phillies, Reds, and Brooklyn Robins. Smith had been a mediocre Major Leaguer, but was dominant against guys who spent most of their week tilling fields and fixing pipes, like if you had a Jeff Francoeur to your Bay League softball team. The Farmers played good baseball, but they were hardly the Majors. Nothing was more symbolic of that than Orms Field, which would never be confused with Yankee Stadium. Outfielders would share their space with Orm's grazing dairy cows, and frequently the aftermath of those dairy cows. There was no outfield fence, but rather the Norwalk River in left field, a chicken coop in center, and a hedge in right field that defenders would have to jump over to track down deep fly balls. Admissions to games were 50 cents, with an additional 25 cents to sit in the grandstands. Concessions were provided by Orm's Diner, which was established in 1921. And while good food and fine play attracted most fans, sometimes the team had to get creative about how they attracted their spectators. One example, in 1940, the team partook in a pregame display of donkey baseball. As the name suggests, the team played a few innings riding on the backs of donkeys. I'm sure the fans loved it, but my guess is that the donkeys felt a little bit differently. The most famous fan to make their way to Orms Field was none other than Yankees slugger George Herman Babe Ruth. The Babe did not end up in Wilton by accident. The Hall of Famer was friends with two former minor leaguers and farmers players, Francis and Godfrey Brogan, whose parents lived in Wilton at the time. Babe Ruth visited the Brogans in 1936 and snapped a photo with some very lucky local kids. Even through the Great Depression, the farmers remained popular, frequently drawing up to a thousand fans per game. Unfortunately, World War II helped bring an end to the farmers' success. The farmers had many players enlist in the military, and gasoline rationing made it nearly impossible for visiting teams to visit Wilton. They played their last game at Orms Field in 1942. Charlie Orham soon after sold the property and the field was turned into youngsters. That, however, was not the end completely for Wilton Baseball. In the late 1940s, there was a call to bring the Farmers back. In 1950, with backing from the Wilton Athletic Club, an amateur team that had been playing in Canada adopted the Farmers nickname and began challenging rivals from other local towns like Norwalk and Westport. The second edition of the Farmers joined the Intertown League and while the days of rostering former major and minor leaguers was over, the Farmers proved to be a formidable opponent. Over the next two decades, the Farmers provided weekend entertainment for world baseball fans. Unfortunately, in the 1970s, the team finally disbanded. Television had made Major League Baseball more accessible than ever, and while the need for small-town teams had dissipated, sunny afternoons at Orms Field remained fond memories for Wiltonians decades after. Thanks for watching. Always remember to properly stretch your arm before throwing, and stay tuned for more.